Hello fellow YouTubers, this is Bill McFadden from Tone Pure Music, and this is, will be part two of how to write a romantic or a love cue. And we'll go ahead and play the first eight measures and then take a look at those, and then look at the six, second eight measures and take a look at those. So here's the first eight. Okay, so that was the first eight measures of the cue. And let's take a look at the basic harmony structure of that and the melody. So here we have the theme, and here we see the chords that were used and also the relative position of the chords. It was actually in the Lydian mode, which is common for romantic music. That's one of the characteristics. It can be in a major key, but also the Lydian mode is very common for the romantic or intimate kind of music in general. And the harmony pretty much follows the major key. If you'll notice, we have a, a major one chord, a major five, a minor six, which are all typical of a major scale also a major four. And here we see a slight variation. We have a major two chord, and that's in part because we're using the Lydian mode, which has a sharp four. So instead of a D minor chord, we have a D major chord. Then we're back to the one chord, which is major in the major scale than the five chord. Then another twist here, we have a flat three, which is also common in romantic music. And then we have our positive of our major four chord. So here's the melody with the accompanying harmony for the first eight measures. Okay, then if you'll notice in this measure right here, which is actually measure eight, it changes keys. And the harmony actually that's being used here, it turns out that the F chord and the G minor chord, the following chord, have a common scale. In other words, the F chord is the fourth chord in the C scale. And then if we go to the G minor scale, you have your one, your three chord, in the G minor scale. So you notice the seven in the G minor scale is the F chord. So both the C scale and the G minor scale have those chords, have the F chord in common. So that's where we change the key. We have that common chord of F in the C scale and also in the G minor. So it makes the transition easy to go from measure eight to measure nine because they have a common chord. So let's go ahead and take a look at measure nine now. Orchestrated. So we still have the string chords accompanying the melody, but in this case, we went from the flute 
that we had in the first day measures now to the French horn. And that's common when you switch a phrase or a usually an eight bar phrase. It's very common to, to change the, the melody instrument, which in this case went from flute to French horn. And then it goes back to the original melody in measure 17. So if we take a look at what we had, in measure, okay, we went to a minor key at measure nine, <clears throat> right here. And uh, we started with the one chord, which in a minor key is minor, and the five chord in a minor key is also minor. So we have the minor five chord. And the six chord in a minor key also is major. And then we went to the three chord, which is typical. And then your four chord minor. And then here we have a slight twist. We have the second chord, a flatted second here. And then the seven chord is major in a minor scale. And then we go back to the one, four, or the one, the five, and then the four, which is major, and the three. So an easy way to get the major and minor keys is just to go to the A minor scale. And you see the one chord is minor. The two chord is actually half diminished. The three chord is major, the four chord is minor, the five chord is also minor, the six chord is major in the A minor scale, seven chord is also major, G major, and then you're back to your minor A chord. So that's a good one to look at if you're, if you're trying to decide if the natural scale is major or minor for each of your triads and your diatonic harmony. So there was a slight variation here. We had the uh, flat two. And then it goes back into the original melody. Now, if, taking a look at the melody structure, we're here, we're, we're in C. So we start out with passing tones. So here it's unusual, the, the actual melody line is in the C Lydian mode, but none of those notes actually are in the, in the chord C, they're not chord tones. And then in measure two, we do get a chord tone of the G chord. And also the note G is, is a chord tone in the, in the G chord. And then we have some passing tones here. The first note, C, is actually in the chord of A, and it goes down to A. So you have a passing tone in between the two chord tones. And then you're back on the A. Then another passing tone to the C, which is a chord tone in the key of F, and so on. So that's how you can see what's going on in terms of chord tones and passing tones and possibly neighboring tones. So in general, in uh, romantic music, <clears throat> triads are used extensively. As we see in the bass, we've used triads extensively. The chord progressions are generally stick to the key, as we saw, mostly a major key. <clears throat> Often, also you can have suspensions. You can have the four, three suspension in the melody, the nine, eight, and also the seven, six, and also a six, five motion, which is not really a suspension, but it's commonly, but used like a suspension and commonly employed in romantic music. <clears throat> 
and it's common to, to use chords built on the flatted scale degrees, particularly the three, the six, <clears throat> and the seven. So here we see the, the three being used, flat three. Excuse me, I am getting over a, or actually, hopefully getting over a cold. So we see the flat three being used in this, in these eight measures. And then in the uh, second melody line, the second eight measures, we see a flat two, which is also being used in this case. So so we have a mixture of chord tones, non-chord tones, and you could really build a cue primarily just on chord tones, but this one has considerable amount of uh, passing tones. And uh, let's take, talk a little bit about the orchestration. Initially, we start with the flute, and then we go to the French horn. But in the third statement, in measure 17, we bring in a cello. So here, let's take a look at 17. So there we brought in some French horns. It's actually building because the film itself is building. We take a look at the scene that's going on at that point. So we hear the French horns coming in there. And then in a moment, we'll hear the uh, strings come in. So here we go, building on the existing orchestration. So there we have it. That's the we saw the, um, the harmonic structure, the melody structure of the cue, the two eight bar phrases. It's basically an ABA structure. We came in with the A, the first eight measures, then the B transition to the key of G minor. And then we went back to the key of C. If you'll notice this G chord right here in measure 17, gets us right into C. It's basically secondary dominant of C. So it gets you smoothly back into the original Lydian mode in C. So, so we have the melody, the tempo and rhythm, usually we're in three, four, or four, four. As you can see, we were in, in this cue, we were in 4-4. Four, four. And they tend to be slow. So you follow the rhythm of the, of the video that you're writing your music to. And it was quite slow. And once the um, mood becomes more intense, then we usually place the melody in upper strings, possibly doubled or in octaves or in unison. So we could add additional instruments if we needed more drama. We could add in high woodwinds, flute, oboe, English horn, possibly clarinet. Also, one thing that this cue didn't have was counter melodies, but we could add those um, where, where the melody line is not quite as busy, but if you see, but as you see, there was quite a lot of activity in the melody line, so didn't really need a counter melody. And um, harmony is usually placed in the low strings, which it was in this cue. The low brass, trombones, and possibly tuba 
and possibly even bassoons and bass clarinet could be used in the lower harmony as well if you wanted to build it more. And you can use the upper woodwinds as your candy in scales and runs that are consistent with the underlying harmonies. So that'll conclude this study of the uh, romantic or intimate ballad music. So this is Bill McFadden. If you like this video, please click like. And if you want to be notified when more videos become available, please um, subscribe. And also, it turns out YouTube just recently has a policy that um, YouTube creators with less than a thousand subscribers will <clears throat> no longer be funded. They will no longer be able to monetize. So I would really appreciate it if you uh, would subscribe to keep this channel alive. So Bill McFadden signing off from Tome Pure Music. <laughs>